Good morning. Today on Rick's Reloading Bench, I'm going to cover how to reload for the 308 Winchester, uh, specifically for my bolt action Remington 700. Now, after you've fired your uh, cartridges and you come home, you've got casings now that have been uh, form fired. And so the question is, what do I do on my resizing? Do I full length size? Do I neck size? Do I bump the shoulder? Just what exactly do I do? Well, before you can make that decision, you have to know uh, what headspace is, because that is what determines which method of sizing you'll use. Now, headspace, if we take this cartridge, which is factory ammo, uh, not one of my reloads, and you take my finger representing the bolt and my thumb representing the handle. If you take and you insert the cartridge in all the way and you close the hammer, the bolt, there is going to be inherently a distance between the bolt and the cartridge. That distance between here and here, which I'm exaggerating, is called headspace. All right. Now, you have to have minimum headspace uh, uh, according to uh, the, the SAMI uh, Institute. And if you have too much headspace, then that's not good because it'll build up excessive pressures and you may experience uh, case separations. If you have too little headspace, you won't even be able to chamber the round. It won't even go in all the way. So you have to know what your headspace is. Well, how do we measure headspace? Well, I happen to use the RCBS precision micrometer. And with this, I can determine headspace of unfired and fired uh, casings. So we'll put in this factory round. And as you can see, right around four thousandths. Now, four thousandths is okay. It'll fit in just about any rifle. But four thousandths is a little excessive for me uh, for headspace. Uh, you want less than that. Let's go ahead and take a... Let's take a, a, a fired round, take the casing, we'll see what we've got. Okay, we're just a hair above the uh, minimum standards. When you go up, it's, it's not good. So what we'll do is I've taken my full length sizing die and I've set it up so that it will only bump the shoulder about two thousands. It won't, uh, it won't affect the, uh, it won't full length size. That way we're not overworking the brass. Helps to put it in the right end. Okay, now we only moved it about a thousandths, but it's still below the minimum. 
so that's okay. Let's try another one, just for consistency's sake. Here's one again, a little less than zero. Put a little of my homemade case lube on it. There you can see that it's about one thousandths under. So we're, we're pretty consistent. And I might mention that in here it says that um, the correct sizing for the rifle would set the shoulder back one to two thousandths from the fired case dimension to allow proper function and feeding under field conditions. So um, I'm at one thousandths and, and that's what you need to have or that's what I want to have. Uh, so you, you set this up and uh, it uh, it will go ahead and, and and once you get it set up, it's it's going to work every time. You don't have to keep adjusting it. So, if you have to bump size because of head space, you do it, and uh, you you know you're all set. And what and if you don't have to, if you if your head space is already correct, then you can just next size. And I uh, I don't profess to be a professional on this or an expert on it. All I know is what I've learned um, through trial and error and through uh, uh, practice and um, it works for me. So if it can work for me, it can work for you too. So now we're ready for the next stage of um, reloading for this particular round. Now I might mention that I use Hornaday match grade brass in my bolt action. If I find any other brass on the range that I pick up, I'll keep that, take it back, and I'll use it for reloading in my semi-automatic 308. But I'll only shoot match grade brass that I've fired for my rifle in my Remington, because then I know that it's been mated up with my rifle and it's good to go. Okay, so let's move on now to the next step of reloading. All right, the next step, now that we've uh, bumped the shoulder, is that we want to uniform the primer pocket. looks good. So now we need to know, oh, now we need to know, do we need to trim this case or not? So we'll have to measure for it. So, take our RCBS calipers, digital calipers. Now, 
that says 2.034 inches all right and the book says that the maximum kth length can be 2.015 so this obviously has to be trimmed now I've got the RCBS trim pro made case prep center All right. I've got my headset and what I do is uh, I will keep a trim case and I'll use it and I'll set it in here and I'll move this in and I'll make my adjustments on a collet and uh, so that I know that it's it's set for the, the right length. Now I'll deburr it and then chamfer it. Or I should say I'll chamfer it first and then deburr. And there you can see that it says that the case length is 2.005 inches. And that's what the book says you should trim to length. So with that, the case preparation is actually done. Now we can go ahead and uh, put the primer on. Right, now we're ready to put the primer in. I use CCI large rifle primers bench rest number twos. So we'll go ahead and we'll put the primer in. And there we've got the primer inserted. Now I'll use the uh, primer tray when I'm doing a, a lot of these at one time. But for simplicity's sake, I, I'm just doing one for this video. So I just loaded it manually. Okay, now we're ready to throw a charge. Okay, now we're ready to throw the charge. We will be using Hodgson's H4895 and we'll be loading it with 43 grains. Now, on shooting for accuracy, I trickle charge each and every one of my 308 rounds. I'm trying to do the best I can. I'm not one of those people that sorts cases by weight or sorts bullet by weight, but I will pay close attention to how much powder is going in each case. A standard thrower charger is not going to be consistent, but I can be consistent if I trickle it. Now the Hornady uh, metering insert that I use um, for this is one that's set up for another firearm and it uses it's set up so that it will throw a consistent 45 grains of H110. Well, since uh, H4895 is uh, a different uh, composition compared to the H110, um, a charge of that results in only roughly around 42 grains. So that works out fine for me. I'll just trickle the extra uh, grain that I have to and uh, that way I don't have to have two separate metering inserts for the job. Okay, so we'll let this thing settle. And we'll just keep trickling this in. She's right at 43 grains. And we're white at 43 grains. So now what we'll do is we'll 
take out our funnel. And we'll go ahead put in the 43 grains okay now we're set for the final stage which is seating the bullet alright now we will uh, seat the bullet got our seating die in we'll take our prime and charged case insert it in now the bullet that we're using, or that I'm using, that I use uh, for my 308 Remington, it's made by Sierra, 30 caliber, .308. It's a 155 grain hollow point boat tail Palma match. All right. Now, when I seat this. I'm seating it to a depth to where it'll just barely fit in my box magazine. If you want to be more accurate, you can uh, not seat the bullet so much so that it sticks out a little bit longer, but then you have to feed them in your rifle one at a time. You can't use the uh, a box magazine or the, uh, this, the magazine that it came with from the factory. And that, to me, kind of defeats the purpose of it. You know, I want to be able to get off shots in a relatively reasonably fast rate. And uh, I don't want to have to, you know, be reloading each time. So I set this so that it just barely fits in my magazine. So if you take uh, the factory uh, loaded 308 versus my reloaded 308. You can see that my bullet is definitely extended out past that of the standard round. This will give me better accuracy than a fa factory round, and that's why I seed it the way I do. So, I hope you've enjoyed this information and that you found it informative. And uh, until next time, take care.